This book was revealed to an illiterate prophet. That means an unlettered prophet. 1424 years ago, it has been, it was memorized over a period of 23 years, it was revealed. And it was memorized by the prophet himself, peace and blessing be upon him, and it was memorized by several of his companions, and he reviewed their memorization of it, and the angel Gabriel that brought it to him reviewed his memorization of it, and so when the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, passed away, there were several companions of his that had memorized this whole Quran under his review. And since that time, millions of Muslims have memorized the Quran in every age. And I almost guarantee you that there's probably at least two or three or four Muslims in this gathering here that have memorized this whole Quran or the greater portion of it. And another miracle of this Quran that cannot be said for any other book is that if all the Bibles, if all the Talmuds, if all the Hindu scriptures, all the Buddhist scriptures, if all those books were thrown in the ocean, if all those people of those religions agreed, throw them all in the ocean, and then we Muslims, we threw all the Qur'ans in the ocean also. The Qur'an is the only one that in a matter of a day or two would be brought right back because it has been memorized from cover to cover. I say to you, brothers and sisters, and our guests, you, you owe it to yourself. Punch in the name Quran, Q-U-R-A-N, punch it in, and see if you can compare, see if you can find a scripture, see if you can find a writing, see if you can find a document that compares with the Quran. You will not. You owe it to yourself to read this powerful scripture. Don't ignore it. You cannot afford to ignore it. Either it's profound, either it's from God, either it is comprehensive, either it is as I say it is, or it is not. At least you should investigate it. Why should you be blind to something that might have that kind of impact on your life and the life of others? After all, this is not the legislation of Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. It is the legislation of whom? هذا القرآن يوحدنا لطريق الخير يوجهنا الله تعالى أنزله ورسوله الحمد لله وحدا والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعدا ولا عليه وأصحابه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم افلا يتدبرون القران ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا في اختلافا كثيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي The topic of my talk is is the Quran God's word As all of us know that Quran is an Arabic word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given five names of the glorious Quran in the glorious Quran itself. If you read Surah Bakra, Surah number 2, Ayat number 185, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al-Lazi unzira fil Quran, Hudallin nas wa bayinati min al-Huda wal Furqan. Two names of the glorious Quran has been mentioned in one ayah. That is in Surah Bakra, Surah number 2, Ayat number 185. And in Surah Furqan, Surah number 2, uh, Surah number 25, Ayat number 2, the name Furqan is also mentioned there. The second, the third name is in Surah Bakhara, Surah number 2, Ayat number 2. Alif, Lam, Mim, Zalikal, Kitab. Third name. If you read Surah Hijr, Surah number 15, Ayat number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahula hafizun. The fourth name, Zikr, is mentioned in this ayah. The fifth name is in Surah Zumar, Surah number 39, Ayat number 2. The name there is At-Tanzil. The word Quran, Arabic word, 
It is derived from four root words. The first one is Khiratul. It means the book which is maximally read. And the best example you can see is in the month of Ramadan and your daily five times prayer. The second word is Kharyan, which means the book which has got all types of knowledge in it. This book has got all types of knowledge in it. When we say these statements to the non-Muslims, they revert back, they question back and they say, what does Quran say about robot? What does Quran have to say about dinosaur? So when we say that this Quran has got all types of knowledge in it, it means the knowledge for your hidayah to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Example, Allah says in Surah Bakhra, Surah number 2, Ayat number 185, Allah says, Shahru Ramadan al-Lazi unzila, fir, unzila fil Quran. Khudan lin nas, meaning this Quran is guidance for mankind. The third name is Kharanun. Kharanun meaning you have to understand a particular ayah with its context. For example, if you read Surah Tawbah, Surah number 9, Ayat number 5, it says, Wherever you see non Muslims, kill them, chop off their heads. Now, today, if someone comes and says, This is the verse, this is the ayat in the Glorious Quran, now I want to apply it. Can you apply it? Can you apply that ayat? But it's the, it's the ayat of the Glorious Quran, and in the sense of command, and in the sense of command, this is the ayat in the Glorious Quran. No, we have to understand it according to the context. Context meaning the text before the verse, the text after the verse. This is called as context. And the fourth meaning, the fourth word is Kharinatun. Kharinatun, it, it also means that the particular ayat we understood keeping in view all the ayats of the Glorious Quran. For example, Allah says in the Glorious Quran that alcohol is beneficial for you. So now someone comes and says, now I, I want to have alcohol because it gives me benefits. Can he apply that ayah? No. Now he has to search in the glorious Quran. Allah says in the glorious Quran, Surah Maida, Surah Mafaya, number 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that alcohol intoxications is prohibited for you. Now, this ayat should be followed. Surah Maida, Surah Mafaya, number 90. A person cannot say that I want to follow that ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that alcohol, alcohol is beneficial for you. So these are the four basic root words of the glorious Quran. Glorious Quran is the word of Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, revealed to last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the span of 23 long years. The first revelation of the glorious Quran is from Surah Allah, Surah number 96, ayat number 1 to 5. These were the five ayats of the glorious Quran which were revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from 610 to 632. Now, all this information is with the Muslim. Now, what about the non-Muslim who does not believe in Allah, who does not believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who does not believe in the revelation of Almighty God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How to prove him about this book? According to a book by Moraes Bukail. In the glorious Quran, there are about thousand scientific ayats. Scientific ayats which have been mentioned in the glorious Quran. Today, in the short span of my speech, I would like to quote some of the ayats to prove, to give you a glance, to give you a initiating thought process. How to start with a non-Muslim, with the atheist who does not believe glorious Quran to be the word of God. For example, if you read Surah Ambiya, Surah number 21, ayat number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Avaram yallazina kafaru, do not the unbelievers see, anna samawati wa lazaka na tarakhtan, that the heavens and the earth were joined together, fa fatakhna huma, and it is we, Allah says, it is we who have ascended them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking a rhetoric question. Allah says, do not the unbelievers, these agnostics, these atheists, and these scientists who follow Scientology as the religion, don't they see that the heavens and the earth were joined together and it is we who have ascended them. This theory, this fact was found out by two scientists 
1973, these two scientists they said that this thing happened. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this fact 1400 years ago to a prophet who does not know how to read and write in the deserts of Arabia where there was no water. This fact has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And in the same ayah, in Surah Ambiya, Surah number 21, ayah number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْنْ هَيْ We have created every human being, every living thing from water. Today the scientists, they tell us that the living beings, 70% of the living beings who live on the face of the earth, 70% is of H2O, that is water. This fact is given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 1400 years ago to the people who lived in deserts. There was no seashore. There was no seaport with them. And this ayat is revealed. And Prophet is telling to the people, telling his sahaba that you have been created from water. And no sahabi questioned back. No sahabi questioned back. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have, we don't see water around us. So how? Are we created from water? No question, no rhetoric question. Ayat is revealed, Samayna Vatana. And if you read, Surah Naziyat, Surah number 79, Ayat number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that we have created earth in the shape of an egg. And the Arabic word used there is Dahaha. And this word specifically refers to the egg of an ostrich, which is geospherical, geospherical in shape. And if you see the shape, of egg of an ostrich and the shape of the earth is it is similar look this fact is again given to prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago when there was no imagination of spherical shape of the earth people used to fear that if they go far away they would fall, fall off from the edge they would fear they would not go far away because they, would, they used to fear that if you go far there is an edge and they will fall but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this fact 1400 years ago. Today science tells us that the light of the moon, the light of the moon is reflected light. If you read the Bible, in book of Genesis chapter number 1, God Almighty says, God Almighty has created two lights. The greater light is the sun and the lesser light is the moon. Which indicating that Moon has got its own light. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Furqan, Surah number 25, number 61, Allah says, The light of the moon is reflected light. The light of the sun falls on the moon and the reflection comes on the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fatiha, Surah number 1, ayat number 1, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of the universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe and as he has created this universe, he has revealed his creation to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Even then, after giving all these scientific facts, a person, now he says, now I don't believe in science. He says, I don't believe in science. What next? What next? A die should be prepared. Now, the next reaction is, Challenge. The last and final reaction. Challenge. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Normally in, in our lo, normal days, if your brother, if your friend is not accepting one, one of your theories or fact, what do you do? I challenge you. This is your attitude, right? In the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging in the glorious Quran. To the people who used to speak Arabic. Arabic was like a water. Arabic like was a water on their tongues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving challenge to them. Where? Allah says in Surah Isra, Surah Bani Isra, in Surah number 17, Ayat number 88, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you don't believe that this Quran is the word of God, and you say that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has written this Quran, if you believe so, then if Prophet has produced this Quran, why can't you? This challenge is given to Kufar e Makkah, whose mother tongue was Arabic, who used to speak Arabic like anything whose mother tongue was Arabic to those people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging if you say that this Quran is from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if he can produce being an Arab why can't you so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling in the glorious Quran in Surah Isra Surah number 17 ayat number 88 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says produce a Quran like unto it 
114 surahs, approximately 666 ayats. You hang your poetry on the walls of Kaaba. You, you say that we are Arab and you people are Ajam. We have the language of, we have the power of language. The Arabs used to say that we have the power of language. We have the power. And the power, <coughs> and the power is Arabic. And the rest of the people are Ajamis. They are out of the language of Arab, Arabic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now produce a Quran. They can't. They can't and they did not. So what did Allah say? He reduced the challenge. He reduced the challenge. From 114 surahs, one Quran to 10 surahs. Where? In Surah Yunus. Surah number 10. Ayat number 38, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you can't produce 114 surahs, one Quran, then produce only 10 surahs. Only 10 surahs like unto the glorious Quran. This challenge was also not fulfilled. Again, the challenge is decreased. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Hud, Surah number 11, Ayat number 38, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Produce only one surah. And which is the shortest surah of the glorious Quran? Only three ayats. They used to say, we have the power of language, of Arabic, but could not produce three ayats. Allah SWT said, you can't produce. So, Allah decreased the challenge. Where? In Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 22 and 23, Allah SWT says, ala abdina fatu bi suratin bi misli. If you are in doubt for what we have revealed to our servant from time to time, then produce a surah like unto it. Not exact, not similar. Like unto it. Like. Vadu shodakum bindu nilla. Take the help of anybody except Allah. In kuntum sadiqin. If you are truthful. Wa illam tafalu. And if you cannot produce it. Wa lam tafalu. And for a surety, you cannot produce it. Fattakun nara razi fakudu hanna suwahil lijara. O iddatil kafirin. Then prepare for the fire whose fuel is men and stones. Many tried, many Arabs, they tried, but they could not fulfill the challenge. Why? Because this is the challenge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not a joke. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging and this is not a joke. Many Arabs, recent, in recent times, in recent century, a person by the name Anish Shorosh, a person by the name Anish Shorosh, who had debates with Sheikh Ahmad Didat, he tried to produce a like of the glorious Quran and he gave the title of the book as al furqanul Haq the name itself is wrong according to the Arabic grammar al, al, al furqanul Haq according to the Arabic grammar this name itself is not correct so this cannot be fulfilled till the, till the day of judgment because this is the challenge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this I would like to end my talk wa akhiru dawana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen hmm.